Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Think Global podcast. I'm your host, International Seth, and today's date is September 22nd, 2021. If this is your first time listening to the Think Global podcast, we'd like to welcome you with open arms. Make sure you help us grow this channel by subscribing in the lower left-hand channel, a lower left-hand corner to this channel. We would also like to uh, invite all the, the existing listeners to make sure you can put your notifications and updates so you can get instant notifications straight to your inbox. This is a global platform and we have international content, international travel, living abroad, and overseas basketball. I'm going to be discussing a, this with a new guest, um, particular international teaching while he's living abroad. And uh, I know Omar for a few years, so I'm sure we're going to get into talking about some basketball as well. So uh, I'd like to welcome Omar Lewis onto the Think Global podcast. Welcome, Omar. Thank you so much. It's my honor and privilege. Thank you, my old good friend. You know, this guy, I know, it was, what, I can't, you know, time flies, but we've like over maybe nearly like 12, 13 years now. Can you believe I, that? I, I've been trying to, to remember, I mean, because I got to Kuwait in 2008, but you were already there for a couple of years, correct? Yeah, I was actually, it's fun. I was already there for like seven years, oh, six, seven years, something like that, yeah. Oh, so you've been hiding out there for a minute, man, a minute, a minute, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that right now. What I want to do is put you on the world call. That's when we give our guests 10 seconds to name off some of the country that you've been to. Now, I already know that you've been living abroad for a long time, so it's going to be good to hear some of the country that you visited. Right now, we're going to put Omar Lewis on the world call. Ready? Okay. Go. Bahrain, um, Qatar, UAE. Um, Germany, um, Amsterdam, uh, Jordan, um, of course, Mecca, where I made I'm, um, Saudi Arabia, I made my pilgrimage, pilgrimage uh, back in two, 2001, 2000, um, uh, what else? Uh, obviously, the United States. All right. Up. All right. 10 <laughs> seconds is up. 10 seconds is up. Congratulations, man. So I heard a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries. Um, how long were you at? Let's just let the audience know where you're at right now and uh, how long have you been there for and uh, like what's your current position? Okay, I am, uh, I've been in, I'm in Kuwait. Um, I've been in Kuwait pretty much mostly uh, 20, 20 years per se, give or take. Um, am I currently, I've had various, I'm a teacher, but I've had various positions as a teacher. Currently I'm teaching, um, English, middle school English and social studies. Prior to that, I had an extensive physical education background as well as I was an athletic director for years, basketball coach and things of that nature. Obviously with the pandemic, uh, a lot of that stuff is shut down. So I had to figure, I had to go into my other, you know, my, utilize my other skills per se. And that's why I'm in, back into the, in the classroom. So I've, you know, basically th that's, that in a nutshell. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. So I wanted to definitely talk about how these adjustments came as a result of the pandemic and everything. But um, let's just touch a little bit about, about the responsibilities and duties of a, a physical education teacher. A lot of, I think, I think personally, I mean, I might be biased because I was an athlete. We all grew up playing sports, and I love PE. But I think that PE is a is 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 a is a, a integral part of education, a, co a comprehensive education, um, especially yeah. nowadays with like all the the mental health and the physical health, and you know all the challenge that, that we're facing as society. You want to just talk about like um, you know how the importance of physical education in uh, you know through through education in general. Um, well, you know, most definitely, um, it's it, physical education is. I would say it's an underrated profession. A lot of times, basically, on a lot of times on this side of the world, because they look at it as you're the play teacher, and um, <laughs> and the, and the thing is, is that we know we know that a lifestyle of wellness is really should be propagated early. In, 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 in the education, in, your, in a kid's educational um, acumen. Because, you know, the, at the end of the day, like you just mentioned, mental health, you mentioned, you know, it teach, you learn a lot of things with physical education in addition to wellness about, you know, 
what, how, you know, um, how your body, you know, taking care of your body, but it also induces taking care of your mind because it really, you know, alleviates a lot of stress. Now, both you and I were former college basketball players. We learn, you know, one thing that I always know that the camaraderie that's gained from, you know, the coping skills that are gained from, ta- from, from, you know, playing sports and, and even in P even with PE. So I think that, you know, a lot of times we, um, Things like, for example, I was lazy as a kid, as, as a kid, even as an athlete in stretching. Now I'm in, I'm, I'm in middle, I'm middle age now. And I'm looking, you know, like right now I have a, you know, I have a bad, a hip issue. And I think to myself, you know, hindsight is 2020. What would I, what I would have given to know, or to rather, I, I knew to, to appreciate the fact that you have to stretch. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, so, you know, because a lot of things that I might be paid, you know, one might pay for, for later in life that could have might have been alleviated if they would have taken it more seriously. Right. And then, you know, you know, and then also with the other aspects of the health aspects about we know that like in, in Kuwait, you know, they were they were ranked as number two in obesity in the world at one time. Mm-hmm. And um we, you know, and strategies of smoking, you know, a lot of to learning about the, the, the dangers of smoking that you get lung cancer. You, the time you find out that you got lung cancer, it's a good possibility that it might be too late. You know, so these things, these things which you learn from physical, with physical education, and I, you know, it's appreciated. So. Man, yeah, doing. yeah. And I was just adding and chime into that, like uh, um, teamwork, you mentioned, uh, you know, discipline, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, uh, you know, just being a little bit competitive and like being driven with work ethic and stuff, all those can be, you know, uh, developed through, through physical education It can later yeah. on down the line, the line, could you have to work with a team when you're professional setting, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Some, you know, sometimes your, your boss is not going to be working, we're working from home. Are you still going to be working hard, you know, as you did going into the office when nobody is watching over you? It's the same type of thing, you know? Well, you know, the thing is, it's, it's funny you say that because I always used to joke as a PE teacher, I was like, man, folks think that we, that I was in a race and at the finish line was a degree. <laughs> and the first person who got there first got the degree. It's more, you know, it's not, it's more to it than that, than, than to that, you know, I mean, uh, a P, you know, the, the stereotype is PE teachers are, are dumb mm-hmm. or, or not, you know, and that's just very far from, very far from the truth. Absolutely. So, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about these challenges um, uh, that happened last year. Obviously, we don't got to get in particular, but we do know that schools were shut down. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything was shut down. And um, I know a lot of schools pivoted to online learning. Um you know, that has, it has effect on teachers. It has effect on students. It has an effect on, you know, the relationship between teaching and learning. Um, uh, how, do, were you doing Zoom like uh, uh, sessions where with physical education? How did you find that as a platform? Was that suitable well, for you? Well, the initially, initially um, when, the COVID, when, when, when COVID broke out in, in, I guess, February of 2020, I was I was still I was still teaching PE, and basically what we had to do is that we had to uh, we had to pre- prepare Zoom Zoom um, lessons, or I would put something I would maybe pick something from YouTube or or put something in you on YouTube, so that they, we um, that the kids at home would um, do. Um, so that was that was a little that was a little challenging. But you know the great the great thing is that I found out I had to do a lot more research on things. For example, um, one of the things I one of the assignments that I I gave my students is that um, the life the life of Muhammad Ali, and look you know or things about or or something like that had to do with wellness. So I had to do find to do you know I had to do find do my research to see what was appropriate. Especially living in a country, I mean, you know, Kuwait, is, the Middle East is predominantly Islamic countries, so you can't just put any content on there. So you have this, so that's a challenge that you know, because everything, you know, something that might be acceptable in the states, you know, would would get you fought, could get you fired here in the Middle East. Get you sent, and, sent right back to the states real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it happens. And, it happens. Yeah, you, it's the littlest. Thing. And you said what I was thinking. 
yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, so that was the thing. But what happened? But after that, because they made they mandated that PE PE would not be um, really taught that much, or if it is taught, um, they're going to reduce your salary. You know, re, you know, because they allow, again, you have that stereotype of uh, of thinking that it's just you know any class anyone can do it. So. If I was faced with a dilemma or oh, take a pay cut, which I couldn't afford to do, or just go or or go teach something else. And um, so I ended up leaving the school that I was at and I ended up taking, excuse me, I, I ended up t um, teaching back, going back into, because I was a homeroom teacher before, going back years removed from teaching, uh, teaching um, core related subjects. So that's real. That was an that was an adjustment, and then basically we had to go online for that. We had we did we did a program called Education, which was a which is a um a learn which is which is a virtual program, and you know you had to learn the kinks of it. I had to end up taking a getting a cert, cert I had to get a cert, cert certificate in Google in Google um I forgot what they call it um. Um, Google uh, PC or whatever uh, it escaped, but I had to I had to get get it, you know how to just work my way around um, the classroom and things like that. So that was a that was a learning uh, that was a learning experience, and it was an adjustment that made. So now you guys are back in the classroom. Are kids physically in the classroom? Well, we haven't started yet. Oh, okay. um, actually, this Sunday, our work week goes from Sunday to Thursday. For those who don't know, I know you know, you know, you know that, but for those who don't know, on the work week in, in the Middle East, uh, in, in the Gulf area, predominantly starts on Sunday, ends on Thursday. We got Friday and Saturday off. Um, we, we ten, we're, 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 we're thinking that the, kid, the, the students will return physically for the first time on the 26th which is Sunday. Now we're also hearing things that, you know, a lot of school, a lot of classrooms are not ready. You know, we're, 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 we're further along than a lot of schools, but a lot of classrooms and a lot of schools are not ready. Ministry is still going around doing checks and things like that. Cause logistically there's lots of things. So we may start Sunday with kids coming back or they may push it back another week or two for that to, you know, for that to begin. So basically some schools are, do have like kids back on a on a hybrid schedule like they'll come two days and three days they're home mm -hmm. so this uh, this is going to be really a learning experience unlike that i've ever probably had to deal with yeah what it's, it's very complicated it's going to be really interesting to see you know maybe five ten years from now um what kind of impacts this is out of had on you know on our children uh you know physically and and mentally as well we'll see what kind of trajectory this puts you know the 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 economy or universities or education as we as we previously have known it. So we'll see how that one, shakes out. One of the one of the things that I'm kind of worried about is that, and I understand that the rules have the rules have to be put in place. Like my classroom, they have to be one behind the other. You know, in line. You know how back how we grew up in classes where you had rows of classes. I hate that. Yeah. I would like. Put my desk in a circle and put on, you know, groups. have them collaborate, but they don't want, they, we can't do that. The no kids more group have, work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have to stay in the classroom. All the teachers come to the class, the kids can't move. Uh -huh. They can't move to class to class. And there's no PE. So mm. I, you know, I was talking to my principal, I said, these, these kids are going to go stir crazy, mm. St having to, to be stuck in a classroom all day. Got to bring your own water. All the water fountains, all the all the water fountains are taped up that they can't uh, that they can't use. So it's going to be a very interesting thing, uh, thing occurrence. So we'll have to see. Yeah, we we'll have to see, man. And best of luck. I mean, all the teachers and everybody who's <laughs> yeah. doing these challenges all over. I know I I, I taught uh, social studies in the Gulf in high school for in Qatar, um, and I've coached in, um, in in Qatar as well. Some you know. Golf kids, but I found the most challenging thing with teaching is uh, is trying to get these particular kids to to be motivated to learn, you know. And uh, it's it's a lot different than back home. Whereas, you know, I think back home it's more like, 
it's a it's a lack of motivation it's a different it's a different lack of motivation you know it's a lack of motivation because they they the around them the surroundings are kind of feeling like it's it's, it's compressed on them right but there their surroundings are more affluent and uh you have more resources and et cetera, et cetera. but just in general they're not really that eager to learn because it's kind of like an exercise in uh fertility you know utility yeah i think what i think a big part of that is that is the affluence act uh, the affluence aspect that many you have you know when I was teaching in the states, um, you had you had people that uh, you know. With the, um, the reality is that they didn't have they don't have much, or they you know, or if they you know they had to worry about you know worry worry their parents had to worry about where you know getting you know where the new school clothes are coming from. Whereas you know a lot of things that you know. Are, are you know that outside that might affect affect them here i think the student you know the students and i always say to teachers that when i'm a mentor with teachers it's not their fault that they got money so let's you know because some of i think some of the, we contribute a lot of us contribute to that problem because we like okay well these these kids are spoiled and everything well you know i mean they you know how many people we know in the states that do have money spoil their kids so and so it's the same you know it's, it's the same thing but the, i think that that is the big issue that many of them you know for example i'll give a, a, a quick story when i first started teaching i, I first started teaching uh um, at aca uh your aca in, in in um in kuwait and i had a student a grade eight kid would used to get on my nerves, really nice kid, but he'd get on my nerves and I'd always have to put him in his place per se and to remind him, remind him about his responsibilities. Years later, I'd say about six, seven, six, seven years later, I'm, I'm pulling into the, I'm going into the mall and I'm driving my, I'm driving my used Subaru, which I, I love that. I love that car. All of a sudden I hear somebody say to me, Coach Ho, Coach Ho. Like that that voice sounds familiar. <laughs> so I turn around and it's the it's the kid that I used to taught. I was like, hey, good to see you. What you doing with yourself? I, I'm you know I'm I'm working in my family's business and everything. I said, okay, that I guess I, I understand it. And as I'm as, as and he said, and we're we're there for a long time. Finally, he finally said, well, he finally he had to leave. He said, Coach, he gives me a hug, and and then he gets in his car, and I'm looking I'm looking. Dude driving a, Maser a Maserati. <laughs> mm, mm, He's driving a Maserati, and I'm like, oh, maybe, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, you know that, you know. But that's really the mindset of a lot of a lot of teach students there that we teach is that they like, okay, I don't really need an education because I might get a, I might get a nice gig, I might with my family, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be rich. And I would be well off anyway. Anyway, so yeah. and so we don't have you know we didn't we you and I know that we had we had to okay we were we were brought up thinking that thinking that you know hey you got to work hard you got to get got to get that degree you got to get that and then you got to try to strive to get that job you get that job to be well off yeah so, absolutely absolutely yeah. animal. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. So let's let's just uh, before we let you go, let's turn to the game of basketball. Uh, I know that's one of your passions, right? You know, I lo you love to discuss basketball. Uh, what's your your general opinion of like today's NBA? I mean, I know you're kind of an old school guy. Uh, who are some of the players that you enjoy watching? Oh, I um, well, I, I have a, you know, growing up, my my favorite, my first my first uh, hero in, in in basketball was Walt Frazier. You know, just like when you had, you know, Walt Frazier was my first, and I was so blessed. I felt so blessed that years later, years later, I, I'm working his basketball camp, and he's he was one of my heroes. Everybody wanted people don't know this, but he was like, you know, he was the first NBA star to have his own sneaker contract with Puma. He had Pumas, and everybody want, you know, he was the first, and you know, everybody wanted that number ten. Mm -hmm. I mean, later on, I like I like Kareem. I like Magic, definitely. And, you know, I I, I kind of like Jordan. I mean, even now, I mean, even now, there's players I admire. I admire. I love. I like LeBron James. 
more so, I don't, th I don't think that he's the greatest of all. He's the greatest, but I think he's in the discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I actually, if we, if you, if you uh, compare, if you can, if you, if you look at the, his, the totality of his career on and off the court, then I would say he's the greatest. So that you know, for his what he does with social justice, what he does, what, 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 where they're telling him to shut up and dribble. He's mm. like, nah, I won't shut up and dribble. The and man, I will, the, know, the man built a school, man. I I couldn't applaud him more. That is like such a you know, man. That is uh, such a remarkable uh, achievement on their their part. Really, really congratulate them on doing I, that. Like Jerry and Rose, Rose did the same thing, and I I I'm very impressed with that with that. Michael Jordan, I I. I I met Michael Jordan back when he was, you know, his first MVP in the NBA. He was, he's my frat brother. So oh. I met him on a fraternity, at a fraternity out, outing one time. Nice. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I like him as a player, but actually, to be honest, I like him less a, a, as an individual. Not, I respect what, only what he does, and I think mm. he gets a bump rap here and there, but I think a lot of times he brings it on himself with a big Isaiah fan. So I, you know, I like Seth. I like uh, Seth Curry. Um, you know, um, you know, I, you know. So there's players now. Even now, I like um, what's the guy from uh, the guy from uh, what is it, Phoenix? Is the Doka? Is he is he playing with Phoenix? Oh, Luca. No, you talking about Luka. Dallas? Dallas Mavericks. Luca yeah, Doncic. And the guy before him, I used to like <laughs> the um, Dirk Nowinski. Dirk. Yeah. Nowinski. So I mean, there's, so there's players that I really like. I, I like I actually I actually like to watch college basketball more than I like NBA basketball. Not because I I don't you know because I I in the, in the college game you see there's things that I see that I'm te I'm trying to learn from to teach and teach players that I have and things like that. So I'm a you know I used to be a diehard Arkansas Razorback fan. Oh man. And I would, I used to love Todd, Todd Day and Lee Mayberry and uh, Oliver Miller, right? Oliver Miller, Oliver mm. Miller. Then later on, Scotty Thurman. I got. I was honored to meet Nolan Richardson one time, mm. and I'm so happy that my whole. I never. I never was a St. John's fan, but I'm a St. John's fan now because Mike Anderson, his assistant, is is is, is at St. John's, and I think he and he's bringing that same 40 minutes of hell. Yeah. That he's still, so but, um, you know, so. That, you know, the, 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 those are my things. I was a big Jerry Tarkanian fan. Yeah. You know, the, you know, you know how what he did not because what he did, what he did not only you know on on the court, but he I think he saved many of many many of black folk mm. black players. Mm. There, you know, I mean, you know, so the sweet piece. He Love probably it. he probably has some like <laughs> crazy stories of like yo you did what like okay let me come get you you know like you know because he had a lot of people coming hey, through. Daniel, like Daniel loves him. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I know that you 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 you've done a, like a lot of summer basketball camps for a lot of like um ex and current uh, NBA players. Um, what have you learned from 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 that experience? Like how people handle themselves and how they're giving back and the the relationship between um, them and all that. Well, you know, the thing is the first basketball camp I ever, I ever worked at was a, I don't know if you ever heard of the coach Herb Sendek. Mm -hmm. Okay. Herb, Herb Sendek was my first basketball camp. And I remember listening and I turned to the guy next to me. I said, man, I just realized how much I don't know about basketball. And then, and I tell, I followed that around one of my, one of my, I became friends with, cause I worked this camp with Kemba Walker. And I knew Kemba, and I knew Kemba Walker when I first started working five star. And he was a camper, and the great thing I know of learned about Kem, learned about Kemba is that the Kemba that was a camper is still the Kemba that's a Kemba that's an NBA player. You know, like so you said, what you learn, you learn that you got some players that are very, very humble, and he's very. I mean, he's humble to the point that we joke around with him. We used to joke around with them. He's like, "Why are you giving us this care? You know, and why are you give? Why you know? Okay, yeah, you an NBA player. We, we don't, we don't, we don't care." And he just laughs and smiles. But he can, but we can do that because he allow, you know, he he gives us that, you know, ability to, to treat to treat him like he's one of the guys. He doesn't want any special treatment or anything like that. Now that hasn't been the case 
with with some of the players that I've met, and I won't mention their names because you know you know out of respect, I don't want to put them on blast if they ever have. But there were some that I was like, okay, yeah, you, you know, I, I had very little use for, but you still remain professional because you know my my wanting, you know, is not always about the money. Sometimes it is, but my wanting to learn something and to about and to establish that network that they say, oh yeah, he worked this camp. We want him at our camp. So I just keep, I just keep, I just swallow my pride and just leave it, leave it alone. But, you know, but generally it's, um, you know, it's, it, it's great. You know, I, I learn I like learning from other coaches. I don't, I don't care if I'm, I, like I said, I'm middle-aged. I don't care if there's a player that's 20 something years old and he, if I see a, a great drill that he does that I like, I say, yo, can you teach me what you just did? I have not, I'm not too, you know, and sometimes, many times they feel honored that you're like, man, this guy's been around basketball longer than me, you, you know, but he's asking me for, you know, you know, advice on how to run this play or, and, and things like that. So those are the things that I think I've, I've learned. Try to stay humble and try to always remember that you're never too old to learn. If you think you can stop, if a person who thinks they stop learning, then I'd worry about them. You know, and that's the way, you know, that's how I look at it. Wow, wow, wow. Profound, profound. Well, we'll just leave it at that then, man. I appreciate you coming <laughs> on. I think that it would be very good uh, for you to keep in contact. And, um, you know, as hopefully as yeah. things progress, we can probably hook up later on down the line at some basketball camps or something, you know. Not a problem. How are you like in Canada? It's okay. I mean, right now is beautiful, man. It's really, really beautiful. I mean, we came here in June. Um, July was beautiful. We were up in uh, in Nova Scotia, which is far northeast. We're actually above Maine, so it's the Atlantic yeah. Ocean. Uh, lots of fresh seafood, but lots of nature, man. Lakes and rivers, and all types of coves and everything. We just every weekend we go exploring and really take advantage. You know, we would apple picking and raspberry picking, and you know, fishing, and you know, it's it's it's, it's been nice, man. Now, when the winter comes, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how nice it's gonna be, but we'll see. We'll see. I haven't had a from, winter in a long time. I'm from New York, and I and like I was telling somebody the other day, I still don't like cold. Never liked it as a kid. And I still don't like it. I have one more question for you. Yeah, tell you, me. Uh, um, our brother Omari Gray. I hear that he's doing much better. Did you? Uh, Alhamdulillah, man. I, I haven't heard that, but uh, the last time I heard, you know, we were praying for him when he had that the accident. I know I was kept in contact with Jabril. He was keeping me updated, but... Uh, yeah, Jabril, yeah. yeah. I, you know, Jabril's still out here doing it. You know, yeah, I, I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ran into him and he was, you know, he every time with Jabril, you know, he's always get, he's always, he's one of them people that I'm like, taking, I'm, I'm taking uh, the knowledge that he's giving me. Man, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, but I know that Omari... Um, you know, the thing is, we were all praying for him. And, and the, the, the thing was, I remember when the, when they told me, they were like, well, he's out. We took him off. They took him off light support. He's hours. He's hours uh, um, away. And, you know, we see that, you know, I, you know, I'm not to get on my religious soapbox, but Allah is always in control because hours turned into to a day. Days turned into weeks. Weeks, weeks turned into months. And now a year, a little, almost two, a, a year and a half late, almost a year and a half later, he's hanging in there. So, and he's hanging in, he's home with his family. So man. that's, a that's, that's awesome. It's amazing. So, Blessings, man. That's amazing. That's so good to hear, man. That made my day, man. That made my day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, he still doesn't remember the accident, a lot of the accident from what I understand and what I let, you know, I, 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 I remember, you know, and he had to relearn some relearn things, even with speech and everything, but Hey, at least we can say he's learning those things. And, and, he's, you know, and, he, and he's there with his family, with his kids. That's exactly. the most important thing that his kids yeah. are going to have their father to with them yes. to grow up. <laughs> yes. And Omari, for those of you, know, Omari Gray, he was an outstanding basketball player. He was, he played, I, I heard of Omari Gray before I met Omari Gray. <laughs> it was amazing, you know, so. Yeah. But there we are. Yeah. All right. Well, shout out to Amari, man. Hopefully you get well soon. And shout out to all the brothers, Suleiman and Jabril and everybody who we, we had yeah. a little community out there in Kuwait. When we were well, you know, Suleiman, and I know we're reminiscing, but Suleiman, he brought his son, he brought his sons to my basketball camp in the summertime. Nice. Not just, you know, a couple of times. And that was so awesome. 
Suns are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, one of pretty one good. of them is going to play community college ball there. Yeah, this year. Yeah, he's yeah he um yeah um yes yeah, he brought them and I'm like what you know you know I'm so happy for happy for. I was so you know I felt bad that I you know I I didn't do a basketball camp this year this summer because of the way with the pandemic or they had limited staff. I said I spent time with my family. Yeah. And, so, you know, I had the best time ever, one of the best summers ever doing it. So it was great. Excellent. Take a break. All right, bro. All right, brother. Take care, man. Be safe and God bless. God bless. All my love, bro. This is this was great. Uh, anytime. Anytime I'm here. God bless. All right, peace.